everyone and welcome to another episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso, known to many as the Orgasmic Body Whisperer, and I am super pumped for today's question. It was actually a question that came in um, before the show even began, and I've been just chomping at the bit to play with you guys with this particular question. So it comes to us from Maria in the United States, and she asks, how can I be orgasmic in the face of judgment? And playing with this particular topic, I may get a little bit fired up, I'm just going to warn you, um, because this this is something that really touches a deep, deep thing for me. Um, Let's let's revisit the energy of orgasm, and the way that I want to describe it today is as that energy of the joyful expression of who you are. The joyful expression of you, the joyful expression of your body. It is the the joyful expression of you and your body really having a good time. Now, this question of like, how do I be that in the face of judgment is probably one of the biggest um, everything is the opposite of what it appears to be scenarios that I have ever encountered. And that is because one of the easiest ways, well, okay, maybe not easy, but one of the best ways to be that energy in the face of judgment, and this is, like I said, and everything is the opposite of what it appears to be, that is to turn it up. (laughs) In the face of judgment, be more joyful if that is what opens up the space for you. Be happier, laugh more, like be more of that energy. The thing is that we are in a sense trained and taught the opposite. I don't know about you guys, but I spent a lot of my life turning myself down to make everyone else around me more comfortable. I turned myself down because I didn't want people to be feel bad around me. I didn't want um, to hurt people. I didn't want them to be uncomfortable. So I took all of that joyful expression of who I am and tried very hard for a very long time to stuff it into a box. And I thought that if I made myself smaller, that all of those people would be okay. But it turned out that in that, I started killing myself and my body and actually wanting to die because that is absolutely no way to live. We're taught that, or there's subtle messages about what it means to like be a good friend or be a good person or be a caring person, right? So that if someone is not Um, feeling well or they're judging you or they're not comfortable with who you're being that if you shut yourself down a little bit then that'll fix it and that again everything is the opposite of what it appears to be because in you shutting yourself down in you cutting off those energies from your body not only are you hurting yourself and your body but you're not inviting anyone else to a different possibility. This orgasmic energy is energy that is innately available to us with our bodies. From the moment that we are born, that energy, that exuberance, that joy for life, for living, for pleasure, for laughter, it's it's just an an innate part of who we are. And when you shut that down, then, you're not inviting anyone else to that energy either. Um, I remember a long time ago, I went on a cruise with my parents and I'm I'm a little wacky. I mean, if you know me in person, you know I'm a little wacky. Um, And when you go on a cruise uh, and you reach a port and you're gonna get off and go on a tour and explore, they give you a little card and they take your picture. Um, and you know that's how they identify you when you come back 
Now, I went on this cruise with my parents many years after I began doing this own of my own personal work. So I was sort of at this place of I'm just gonna be myself and, and everyone else can just deal with it, right? And, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Wesley. Um, so we go stand in line to get our picture taken for this little ID card for the cruise. And, you know, so I'm standing in my spot and the guy's like, okay, you ready? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, here we go, one, two, and then I go, and he goes three and when they snap the picture it's me doing this and it cracked me up it cracked up the person that was holding the camera but it infuriated my dad and this was the general energy of how i grew up like everything that i did infuriated my dad and for many 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 years i tried not to be or do anything so that i wouldn't piss him off but at this point in my journey i was like nah i'm a naturally happy joyful person i'm just gonna be that no matter what and my dad was so mad that he like shook me and like what's wrong with you and i just looked at him and i was like dude that made me happy that made that guy happy and every time i leave and come back from this boat that picture is going to make someone laugh and that was that right so he didn't change because he loved being miserable and angry and unhappy but everyone else around me received that contribution from being that joyful expression of life. I think I was maybe um, in my mid thirties when I finally got to that place where I could own my own expression of who I am no matter what was going on around me. So in the presence of judgment, and I see that Maria is here. I'm doing your question, Maria. Um, and welcome, George. In the presence of judgment, turn it up. Turn it up. And I wanna give you three sort of keys, I guess, to dealing with judgment, right? Because that shit is gonna come up. You know, there are people in this world who love being miserable and they love making everyone else around them miserable. And they love um, being right about themselves and everybody else being wrong. And so that's kind of the energy of what my dad had. He just loved being miserable and he loved being right and everybody else around him was wrong. And once I realized that that's just who he was, then I could just be present with that um, and not make myself wrong because he loved being miserable. Okay, so how to deal with judgment. You're welcome, Maria. How to deal with judgment. Um, if I could, if I could give you a phrase that you could sort of play in your universe in the face of judgment, one of those phrases would be, it's not about you. It's not about you. Now, when you get to the place where you know yourself enough, when you have that core, deep level of confidence in who you are, it does not matter the judgments that get thrown at you. It doesn't matter because you know you. You know you and you are going to continue to choose to be who you are no matter what. And in the meantime, I just want to tell you that it's not about you. Whatever is going on in that person or those people's universe, in their worlds, is entirely based on their own past experiences, on their life, on their judgments. It's, it's, all, it's all about them. It is not about you. But I get it if you're someone like me who really, um, has this level of joy and wants everybody to have this level of joy, then there is that sort of innate desire to want to contribute to other people having that level of joy. But you've got to know that not everybody actually wants that level of joy. And once you let yourself know that, then there is space for them to choose to be the misery that they truly be 
and for you to choose the joy that you truly be. There's space for all of it. No judgment in any of it. Um, another sort of key thing that I would like to impart upon you with this question, hi, Benjamin Davis, um, is that you are different. You're different, you're weird. As my lovely friend Cara Wright likes to say, you're not normal. <laughs> you're different and that's okay. Not only is it okay, it's fucking magnificent because it is your difference that can actually be the catalytic conversion into a greater possibility. Your level of um, joy and presence and uh, orgasmic energy, sexual energy, your innate beauty, that is what makes you, you. And it is magnificently different. And one of the ways in which we trap ourselves, and I'm guilty of this, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> one of the ways in which we trap ourselves is by thinking that everybody else wants what we also want. Doesn't everybody want to be happy? Wait, doesn't everybody want to live orgasmically? Doesn't everybody want to like know the magic that their body is? No, I mean, I wish, and that's like my sort of target in this world, but it's, it's not what everybody wants. So allowing yourself to know how different you are from everyone around you. There is no one in this world that is exactly like you. And in our attempt to try to connect with people, sometimes we try to find those things that are similar and we decide, oh, they must, they must want this too. But it's just not, it's just not true. And you gotta let yourself know that and acknowledge how different you are from everyone else. So first key, it's not about you. It's not about you. Second key, you're really different and weird and not normal, and that's mag magnificent. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is um, it's okay. It's okay to let people go. It's okay for people to flow in and out of your life. And when you allow that to happen, then that can actually create more space for you to choose to be all of you. Um, I know when I was younger, I had a really hard time letting go of people. And I would do this thing, I don't know, maybe you guys do this too, where I would bend, fold, staple, mutilate myself, bend myself over backwards to try to make the other person happy to try to create joy for them. Um, and what that actually ended up creating was unhappiness for me. And, um, hold on, there's another little thing popping at the moment. The words will cut my promise. Um, it's okay to let people go. People come in and out of your life for specific reasons, for specific lessons, for, for, whatever, for whatever that is. And sometimes we outgrow people. You know, if you're anything like me, like I am super OCD about consciousness, super OCD, and I change really fast, and I'm always reaching for more, and I'm always desiring to create more. And not everyone travels at that speed at that speed. I myself know that I am like consciousness on on turbo light speed as fast as I can go. When I'm not, because there's times when I'm not. But that's we're not gonna talk about that this time. Um, so there's even places where you outgrow people. And so if you are in whether it's relationships or business relationships or even family, and you're kind of outgrowing each other, man, the greatest gift is to let each other go. Because then you can each go in your own, on your own pace, in your own pace, on your own journey, and create and have more. 
trying to hold on to something is going to create more contraction and more friction. So whether you're the one that's outgrown someone else or someone has outgrown you, allow yourself the space to, to let them go and invite other people into your life. So those are my three, my, my rant, my three steps, keys, whatever, um, on being orgasmic in the face of judgment. And if we remember that part of the energy of orgasm is the joyful creation and expression of you and your body. And please remember that not everybody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I think it's weird too. Um, so just know that, that not everybody wants that. And if that is something that you desire to create in your life and with your body, then that has to be like a number one target priority in your life. And, and the people that do desire that and do want that, if you keep choosing that for yourself, they will show up. And then you'll have a bunch of orgasmic, amazing playmates. Um, and no, I'm not talking about in the bedroom. If, if, uh, if, you are, if you haven't watched the previous shows, go check them out because we're looking at having an orgasmic life. And, and I want, I mean, I do wonder what that'll create for your orgasms in the bedroom, but we're going a little, a little beyond with this topic. So thank you all so much for being here. I adore you. If you would like to join me live every week, um, check it out, orgasmicliving.live. Oh, I forgot. Oh my gosh. I have a free gift for you guys. <laughs> it is literally hot off the presses, um, but it is the six keys to um, living an orgasmic life. And no, it is not what you think. It is actually an invitation to a different way of being with this energy and being with your body. So you can go check that out at pattyalfonso.sexy slash six keys. And I'll put the link somewhere in the comments or somewhere wherever you are watching and listening to this. Again, thank you all so much for being here. I adore you and I'll see you next week. Mwah. Bye for now.